I wanted to show you all some of the behind the scenes of some of the games. And behind the scenes I mean we're going to use a hex editor and look at some of the executable files. Here we're looking at Might and Magic 4's executable. We're using a free hex editor called FRHED. Here we can see that this was actually compiled using Borland C++ 1991. You can see all kinds of goodies through a hex editor. Here you can see some of the clear text of the game, such as monster names like Giant Toad and Wicked Witch. Now this is really hilarious. They actually have their technical support phone number embedded in the file. Well, I called the phone number and guess what? It's not in service. They even put their address in here. Look, a P.O. box. One other interesting fact of this executable is you can see compact.print. So was this built on a compact? Now what about Mind Magic 3? Let's take a look at that code. Well, when you look at this file, everything looks much more gibberish. And the reason is there's a product being used called PK Lite, which actually compresses the executable and it automatically decompresses when it executes makes it much smaller. Now in the game Bad Blood, when we open up that executable, search for the type of compiler used, we find that it is Borland Turbo C. How about the Bard's Tale construction set? Evidently it uses Microsoft's runtime library. Fountain of Dreams. It also uses Microsoft's runtime library. Starting to see a pattern here? Almost all the games so far have used C or C++. Now we get to a big one. Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Here we're looking at the DOS executable. You can see the copyright from the company. Scroll all the way down and we see another copyrighted technology. Smacker Video by Red Tools. But we can tell that this is C++ because you can see some of the file names embedded and they end with .cpp. There's also a technology used in here called DOS 4GW which was for getting past the 640 kilobyte memory limit in DOS. Finally, we see that the compiler that was actually used is Watcom C++ 16-bit. One of my favorite games, Ultima 6. Let's take a peek at that executable. What's it gonna be? Borland Turbo C. Imagine that. Another interesting thing in the Ultima 6 executable is you can see these BMP files, which are bitmaps. So it's referring to actual bitmap images. Here's an old executable, Ancient Art of War. This is one of the first games, 1983. And interestingly enough, when we do a search and try to find copyright information, we can't find any. This executable is much more compact and doesn't have all the extra junk that you find in the more modern DOS games. And if you think the DOS games are bad, you should try opening up a Windows executable someday. Here we found some of the text information. For the most part, there's nothing really to look at in here. How about some of the other data files for Ancient of War? Here we can see some data information. So what they did was they split it out into more files and got it outside the executable. Made it more modular. In other words, it's probably got a better design than the other games. You had to worry about memory a lot more when there was less of it, of course. 
Some of these data files appear to be the story information, some of its titles of some of the quests, some of it's just picture data. That's one of the fun things of playing around with the hex editor. Who knows what you'll find. Now King's Quest 1 has actually a much smaller file. It has what's called a command file. And you'll notice when I scroll down how tiny it is. That's it. Much more efficient than executables. Much better design. Now, out of curiosity, what do you think Amulet of Yender is going to have? Remember good old Amulet of Yender? One of the few games that got an F rating. Well, let's see what it was compiled with. Surprise, surprise, it's one of the few that isn't compiled with C or C++. It's a basic program. Basic requires an interpreter. In its early days, most programs made with BASIC were much more amateurish. Well, this wraps up this investigative expedition. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the behind the scenes of these old DOS games. See you next time.